This week, we tackle an ethical dilemma about a smartphone close to many people's hearts. We take a closer look at the benefits of unlimited data and whether or not they're actually beneficial and check out the Moto Active, a workout watch that does more than just play your music. It's dialed in, seen at Cell Phone Podcast on this Monday, March 19th, 2012. I'm Jessica Dalcord here in San Francisco with Lynn Law. Hello. And technical producer Stephen Beecham. Hello. Good morning. And Bryant Bennett joins us from New York. Hey, guys. So uh, before we begin, let's do a little bit of housekeeping. First thing I want to do is uh, announce that we're having a special episode of Dialed In on Wednesday, March 21st. That's going to be at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. Why? Because last week we got all hot and bothered talking about ETFs, otherwise known as early termination fees. And at the end of it, you know, we, we were responding to uh, readers, email. And at the end of it, uh, we thought, well, this, you know, we clearly have a lot to say. People clearly have a lot to say out there. There are a lot of horror stories, tips um, that we can just all share around. So we're going to have a special ETF rant off and tip session. Uh, so join us live. We'll be taking live calls. We'll be reading emails that you send us. So send us your emails, send tips, send any experiences, any stories, or save them up for a phone call, and you can share it with us live. Next, I wanted to just give a little shout out to Lynn and her awesome chart making skills. Oh, if you. you haven't seen, we had a lot of iPad coverage last week, and she created this great and beautiful chart about AT&T versus Verizon and what their 4G LTE networks are in terms of stats, such as the date that it launched, the number of markets it covers, number of people covered, um, promised upload and download speeds, um, and a comparison of some of the phones. So not only is it informative, but it is glorious to look at. Um, so great job, Lynn, and you should all check that out as well as all of our iPad coverage if you're interested in that. So without further ado, Let's get into the meat of the topic today um, and a story that has actually had its seeds from a very long time ago, um, well, before January anyway, <laughs> um, been in the works for a while. This is the story of This American Life and actor Mike Daisy, who traveled to China and basically went to Shenzhen, went to the Foxconn factory where Apple manufactures many iPhones and created this one man show on Broadway and elsewhere. It was actually here in um, Berkeley, very close to San Francisco and it's been touring around. It's going to DC next week. Just finished up its New York run actually this weekend and uh, basically created this one man show uh, called the agony and ecstasy of Steve jobs and uh, produces a lot of, facts and stories based on his travels in China and about, about what the working conditions were in Shenzhen. So fast forward, very popular podcast, This American Life, um, I guess interviews him for four hours, makes him the star of one of the podcasts. And then some of the producers decide that maybe some of the facts really didn't check out. So they went into China and found his... Translator. Exactly. And she kind of had something different to say. So this has developed into a giant brouhaha where Daisy is defending himself in his blog post, citing artistic license. Today he's gone after This American Life, um, saying that they quoted him out of context. Um, our Greg Sandoval from CNET News went to his last matinee performance in New York where he received a standing ovation. Greg didn't actually get to go inside because he hadn't purchased tickets far enough in advance, but definitely interviewed some of the people about, you know, whether they knew about this or not and, and what they thought of it. So it was pretty interesting. A lot of people, of course, had some negative things to say about his so-called artistic license with the fact. Um, others did enjoy the show and thought that it was brilliant and insightful and it piqued their curiosity, you know, s stating that, well, you know, maybe not everything was factual in its pure form, but holistically the, the picture was. So this just opens up you know, all sorts of, it breaks open all sorts of dams about ethics and journalism and artistic license and things like that. So when it comes to sending a damning message about technology, especially when it's a device that's widely used today, 
Is there something to be said for artistic license? Was Daisy in the right? Is his position defensible? Or should he apologize and take a different stance? What do you guys think about this? Well, I, just, I mean, uh, I, oh, well, okay, sorry. Ahead, well, I was just going to say, you know, it's a shame because um, I do think that uh, the topic that he's reporting, or not reporting on, but the topic that he's discussing and basing his shows on um, is a very real real issue. Uh, and, you know, I, I think that uh, it's, it's too bad that, um, you know, his sort of lacks, uh, you know, not really following journalistic standards is – is a shame because it's not it's going to do damage to the whole topic as a whole and the whole story as a whole I think um, and I think people are going to discount um, any you know future reports are going to take it um, with a huge grain of salt now and you know it basically does damage to the whole the whole issue even though it's something that I feel um, is really important yeah I, I just think I don't like how kind of unapologetic he was I mean when um, you listen to the retraction in Ira Glass and at first he was just saying, I'm really sorry, but, you know, I am. This is theater and not what I do is journalism. But he knows that This American Life and PRI and what Ira Glass and every one of the producers do, does is journalism. And in the beginning he was just saying, I'm really sorry that you guys took it as truth, but the bottom line is I'm not a journalist. And by knowing that it was going to appear on This American Life, then he should have known that. And they fact-checked the thing. Well, obviously not well enough, but in the, in the first, when they first ran the episode, Ira Glass went through the fact-checking process and how some were wrong, but they decided to run with it anyways until they found out later that more things were wrong. And at first, you just hear him say, I really regret it, I'm sorry. And then the more that he's being exposed, now he's saying, um, with the, the latest news saying that he, four hours of grilling edited down to 15 minutes, and my, my quotes were taken out of context. It's like, well, you know, if you didn't, um, have people operate under the assumption that everything you said was true, then this wouldn't have to happen. And he was just, I just don't like how he's very not, he's just not very remorseful. And he kind of put the stake and the integrity of this American life and what they do um, um, vulnerable. And he kind of risked their integrity. And he's just saying, oh, but I'm not a journalist, so it's okay. But they're, what they're doing is, uh, sorry, I, you know. You know, I, I got to say, too, we had Mike Daisy and Charles Duhigg from the New York Times on Reporters Roundtable a couple months ago. And he never said that he was taking artistic license or anything. He was standing by all of his statements Yeah, he's saying it now. Stuff. Yeah, he's saying ridiculous. it now that he's, that he's sort of in trouble, so to speak. But he never, he never came out and told us any of that. You know, I mean, and I understand he's an actor and he's not a journalist, but at the same time it just seems kind of like was he trying to get publicity for his show or what what was he trying to do well let's pause for a second and invite a couple of our live listeners to call in if they have anything to say on the matter um steve what's the number i got it right here one 900 cnet 2638 you can call us live right now to talk about this and we will put your call on the air so give us a call so, yeah, I mean, in the meantime, so, so then we look at, at things like um, that also have to do with technology in the modern time. We're not looking at something in the past. What about movies like The Social Network? Well, that's just a dramatization like based on a, a book. And, and when you go into the movies theater, you expect to see a movie. But it could still be damning. I mean, how many people went to see that movie and walked away thinking that Mark Zuckerberg had actually lived this life in its entirety? I guess, I mean, when you, with with that kind of like the damning libel thing, it's just like okay, that's just someone's repu that is someone's reputation. And but I don't I don't know about like damning evidence. It's just if you are operating on the assumption that what you're saying is if the audience is operating on the assumption that what you're saying is true. So if an audience goes into a movie theater, then and it says this is based on truth, this is a documentary, then you have to make sure everything that you say is. Um, with integrity but like seeing something like social networking when you see actors when you see actresses and you see a director and, and things like that you know that there that the audience shouldn't be expecting a hundred percent journalistic but to reporting. play devil's advocate how is a stage production any different than a production it's where not you so go his stage production <laughs> is fine but the fact that PRI went up to him approached him said we're gonna run your show we're gonna fact checking and we're gonna you know we're gonna run your show and you know it's a journalistic radio show and Mike Daisy who probably knows what this American life is and knows what kind of standard they operate on said yeah sure everything yeah it's okay and you could see that like during the retraction he was also kind of like back backpedaling anyway so he should have just yeah so 
this American life definitely has a responsibility yeah. of their own to present their material however they do. So, I mean, should they be held responsible at all? I mean, they are. That's why they're saying, like, bottom line, this was our fault. We should have retracted it once the moment we didn't get um, in touch with a translator. And that's why it does come down to them in certain aspects. But I just think they got totally duped. I mean, like, what happens when your source lies to you and just says, yeah, this is true? And, like, and then, I mean, of course, they could have found the translator and done everything, but... Like well, based on, there's yeah. uh, there's some other issues too. I mean, I think the the translator, I mean, who knows what uh, role she had, and uh, not to say that she was she was saying something that was not true, but um, you wonder what the interest is, interest is and who she represents, or yeah, if the, she has any. Could the Chinese government have gotten to her and said, "Hey, yeah, you got to yeah. clear this up"? <laughs> yeah, not to be all uh, conspiracy theory <laughs> on you guys, but uh, I mean, you never know. Um, and I mean, I you know I do think that it's like I said, it's really sad that that, that we're talking more about this guy's actions, um, which were crappy because, you know, <laughs> lack of a better word, he went to he basically gave the impression. I mean, he went to China, he went to uh, Shenzhen or wherever it was, and he went in front of the he did actually go uh, to the factory to Foxconn, uh, uh, and he actually was, um, you know there and interviewing people so he did make the impression that he talked to all these people even though he didn't um you know so i mean it 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 is it is an irresponsible thing to do but on the flip side i think that uh this issue is real and and it's it affects a lot more products than just apple products too it affects all the phones and yes definitely laptops everything um all the stuff is being outsourced um, out there so in some senses does it matter I mean, he, his dramatization has sort of blown open the door on, on you know, he, he's been able to make it personal, right, by pointing out a very particular device and basing his show off of his experiences visiting the factory. He's been able to raise awareness about not just Foxconn, but also, you know, the entire life cycle of the electronics that we use every day. So... In January, CNET actually interviewed Mike Daisy, um, and uh, the question was put to him that he visited factories and talked to Foxconn employees. With the help of a translator, you interviewed workers, some as young as 11, during shift changes over the course of many days. Given the heavy security there and the suicides, were you surprised by how many workers were eager to talk to you? So he talks about that, um, and... Basically, he says that he asked journalists before, told them his plans, and they thought that nobody would ever speak to him. Um, but he went ahead and he asked anyway. He says, I don't want to be too speculative, but it has crossed my mind that it's very convenient for journalists if we convince ourselves that no one will talk to them, then that saves us the difficulty of having to actually do our jobs. We convince ourselves that no one's there and no one's going to talk. Then you don't even have to go to the factory, he means. So I feel like he is putting himself in the role of a journalist there. When it's convenient for him. And then also um, during this interview, uh, CNET asked, you know, we said the story, or the show is not just storytelling, it's also a call to action because after the show, the audience members are given information on what they can do to try to get Apple and other electronics makers to change working conditions. What made you decide to take the extra step? His response, how could it be otherwise? Frankly, it's the least I can do. It doesn't even seem like it'd be ethically responsible to perform a show illuminating these things and proposing that there is a chance for us to turn things around, to begin the process of waking up, and then not provide some ideas toward what, what that might entail. It would actually just be an irresponsible, it would actually just be irresponsible as a citizen. And people have actually come forward um, in support of him. People have called Apple customer service relations. It has galvanized some people. Um, what do you What do you think about those statements? Well, I mean, I mean, I do think that he, uh, you know, like you said, he put his he, he definitely put himself in the position of being a uh, a journalist that was delivering facts and getting and delivering information that not uh, everybody has access to, or even saying that you know sounds like you know he's saying that people didn't even have the, the sort of the wherewithal to go grab those facts or to talk to people and that type of thing. So, so once he puts himself in that position, um, it's, you know, he's definitely, he should know. And, you know, he, he, he's definitely deserves all the, the criticism 
Um, but like I said, the issue is really important, though, because um, you know people people have been dying there in the in that plant. Um, you know, they did put up those nets. Uh, you know, you mean to keep people from committing to, suicide? Yes, to keep people from jumping. Yep. So a lot of this stuff. Um, you know, yeah, okay, he, he, he should be completely grilled for fabricating the truth and posing as a journalist, but um, th- we have to realize that the issue is a real issue and um, people should really think about where these products are coming from and, uh, you know, how they're created, you know. Um, personally, I mean, I would love to see a day when we have, like, really uh, sustainable and, you know, eco-friendly devices that are actually cool as well, you know, not just like made out of, you know, I don't know, like, uh, you know, corn byproducts or something, but, you know, something that actually looks good um, and that you can actually keep keep with you, you know, and not have to keep reusing, just reuse the, the internal components or something. So that 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 is something that I believe the industry should go into, um, take that direction. But, you know, it is a shame. It's a shame that, uh, you know, this 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 topic has been sidetracked by this, uh, guy's actions. So, One more thing I'll put in before we change topics is that the original retracted, now deleted episode of This American Life with Mike Daisy um, is reportedly still on sale at Amazon at show number 454 if you want to hear the original. It's already available at Pirate Bay. And uh, one thing I will say also is that Mike Daisy uh, did redact some of his one-man show in New York um, to highlight the areas where he and his translator were disputing. So you guys have been shy over the phone, but if you have any other comments, you can definitely email us and um, and share them with us. We'll give you those details at the end of the show. So switching gears, um, AT&T has right. done away with all of its unlimited plans, but if you had the $30 unlimited plan you were grandfathered in, um, there's a new story, a new report actually from Consumer Reports that is suggesting that your unlimited plan may not actually be saving you any money. That's correct. And uh, basically, uh, Dong No at CNET took a look at uh, this uh, situation, and he basically figured out, because he was lucky enough to have one of those uh, grandfathered in unlimited plans. I believe he p- he's paying $30 a month, or was. Um, mm-hmm. And yep. he actually tested his uh, his his data usage and found that he wasn't coming uh, anywhere near the 300, uh, you know, basically anywhere near the the amount that uh, that they were charging him for for unlimited. Like he was he was coming underneath 300 megabytes. Um, so he decided to just you know go for that plan um, and which save, costs which costs uh, 20 bucks 20 bucks as opposed to 30 bucks. So he's saving 10 dollars a month. Uh, you know, he's basically just saving that ten dollars a month, as opposed to just handing it over for no reason. Um, and you know, the thing is, uh, I think that's a that's a great observation. Um, and I guess you know, you really don't use that much data on a, on a three G device like the like the iPhone on uh, AT and T. Uh, though I have to tell you that when I personally uh, have been using a four G LTE device on Verizon, um, I actually started to burn through those those uh, data uh, allotments pretty fast. You know, um, granted, it's a phone that I'm not paying for. It was a test device. Uh, I was using the Samsung Galaxy Nexus on Verizon, LTE. And in Ice Cream Sandwich, there's a little feature where you can see now uh, just how much data you're using built right into the OS. I don't know if you guys have seen this. Yes, um, absolutely. Yeah, so, at, like, I actually have only, I only used that phone for, like, maybe two and a half weeks. And I already got a warning for two gigabytes of data. <laughs> so I'm like, what on earth? And it turns out that I do all these really, really kind of questionable things like uh, uh, I, down, I down. Well, OK. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That I did not come across properly. I don't know what um, kind of videos you're streaming. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's not like that. What it is is uh, I'm listening to podcasts, you know, just using Google Listen. Um, it's just that a lot of times I'm running out the door and I forgot to, you know, I, forgot to download the latest, uh, you know, NPR shows or whatever it is, dialed in podcast. I listen to myself a lot. Uh, it's kind of interesting. Uh, so, and you guys too as well. Um, so I realized, you know, I like run out the door, 
uh, hit refresh, and it starts sucking down all that stuff while I'm walking down, uh, walking to the subway, because once you get on the subway, there's no connection anywhere. Um, and I know that's not a smooth thing to do, uh, and it definitely does, you know, uh, pull down lots of data, but I still do it, and I think that's the majority of my data usage there. But um, also, I do a lot of... I know I know I shouldn't do this, but I used the TuneIn uh, uh, Android app to listen to uh, live radio, um, and that's streaming over 4G too. Uh, probably not a good idea, but sometimes you know I just need need to listen to the radio like right then. You know, when I'm outside, I'm walking around. So I think if you have access to that to that faster connection, uh, you're probably going to end up using it. Depending, um, right? Depend, depends on what you do. But if you have an iPhone, it looks like uh, you know on, on AT and T. The 3G is not really going to be burning much data. At least that's what this uh, Consumer Reports um, report had found. For and what... now. But then what happens when the iPhone becomes a 4G LTE device? Oh, Probably yeah. Probably in no. its next iteration. So, And there is the reminder that once you leave your grandfathered plan, there's no going back in. That's right. Yeah, so that, I that personally is going to be bad. I personally think you should invest in your future and keep it. Um, however, if you don't ever see yourself actually using the phone for streaming video or anything like that, um, then you might save money in the long run by leaving it. And that's the question because uh, what's to stop AT&T from saying, oh, well, you know what, uh, the, the 4G device, that's, that doesn't apply to you, um, even, if with, even if you have a grandfathered in. Uh, I don't think that plan. will happen. I think that... 4G LTE iPad users are still grandfathered in. Hmm. Yeah. That Although, would be Although Tech Talk Eye from our chat room is saying that he was told his grandfathered plan will stay when he was upgraded to the next iPhone. So yes, he is corroborating that. So Oh, nice. So it really is a solid plan. Um let's take our ad break and we will be back with headlines of the day. Welcome back to Dialed In, where we've got some quick hits coming right at you. Verizon has reconfirmed by telling Dow Jones that all smartphones going forward will be 4G LTE. Well, guess what? They told me that very same thing first uh, back in January at CES. So keep a lookout for all Verizon smartphones to be 4G LTE, no question. Also, there is a simple hack, says a user of the Mac Rumors forum that will allow you to run your Verizon LTE iPad on AT&T's 3G network. I have not been able to try this out myself, but if you want to give it a go, there are more details at Dialed In. At Sony announcing uh, their new Xperia Sola. And basically this device is a sort of a dumbed down version of uh, some of their other uh, Xperia Next devices. But what makes this so interesting is that it has a finger tracking feature which lets you scroll without having to actually touch the screen. And then also cool. we have, yeah, it's crazy. I want to see this in action. Um, and we also have HTC who has confirmed a whole slew of uh, phones, I believe it's 16 in all, that will get ice cream sandwich updates. So basically we've got a lot of phones including the uh, the, the Droid Incredible 2, the HTC Thunderbolt, um, a whole bunch of different devices. So definitely check that out. And speaking of ice cream sandwich, uh, Samsung Nexus S will also get the an ice cream sandwich. And the Nexus S 4G will get an um, ice cream sandwich update in April. Um, and it's finally confirmed um, before. They were kind of um, not very sure, but now we have word of it. And the Nokia Lumia 610, um, we learned, can be doubled as a Wi-Fi hotspot. Up to five other devices can connect um, wirelessly. The, no the Lumia 710 and 800 don't have it yet, but sources have confirmed that they it will come to those two devices. Good news. So we checked out a bunch of devices this last week, including the LG Connect 4G for Metro PCS, the Samsung Galaxy S2 for US Cellular, the Motorola Moto Active GPS Fitness device uh, that Brian took a look at, and the ZTE score for Cricut Wireless. So, Lynn... Will you walk Hi. us uh, through the LG Connect 4G just a little bit? 
Yeah, the LG Connect 4G is a phone on Metro PCS, so um, it's for anyone who doesn't want, uh, for anyone who likes a no paid, no contract kind of phone. Um, I personally liked it. It was really bright and very fast, um, both the processor and um, and the network because it is 4G, and um, it also has a really bright screen at 700 nits of brightness. And I just kind of really like the phone. It was. Um, it's Android. Um, I think it's gingerbread. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is. And, um, yeah, um, the backing I wasn't such a fan of aesthetically because it kind of feels a little plasticky, but um, everything else, it has a 1.2 gigahertz dual-core processor. And, um, and yeah, it was a really adequate phone that I would recommend for anyone, especially for people who like Metro PCS. And it's always nice to see kind of higher-end phones for uh, those kind of networks. Do you recall the price point for this guy? Um, oh, I not... Oh wait, here it is. Three hundred nineteen dollars after a thirty dollar mail and rebate. Yeah, so wow. it's kind of it's it's steep. Pricey. It's yeah. pretty steep. That kind Ooh. of makes it one of their priciest no contract offerings. Yeah, and then you get um, a data plan and voice plan separately. Yeah. Um, I checked out the Samsung Galaxy S2 for US Cellular. It is exactly the same as every other <laughs> Galaxy S2. It is, of course, on US Cellular's 3G network. And the take-home message that I have is basically, it's a good phone. It was a good phone then, it's a good phone now, and I think that it has the staying power. So even though uh, we are hearing of the Samsung Galaxy S3 coming up, I think for U.S. cellular customers, this would be a good buy still. Um, this one is also a little pricier. It's $229.99, so $230 after a $100 mail-in rebate, and that is with a new two-year activation. Um, Brian, you checked out. Okay, so is this really the full name? Motorola Motor Active, Moto Active GPS Fitness Tracker and Music Player. Is that really the full name on the box? Well, well, actually, I think it, it's safe to say you can just call it the Motorola Moto Active. Um, the rest what is, is just this? you know, basically okay. It's 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 think of it as a really beefy uh, and Apple uh, Nano, uh, I, you know, iPod Nano. If that also has a GPS built in that has a Wi-Fi radio as well as a Bluetooth radio. It comes with a watch strap, or at least uh, you can get it with that in a kit. Um, the whole thing costs uh, $249 for an 8-gigabyte uh, version and basically $299 for a 16-gigabyte version. And it's a music player um, as See, that well. costs more than the phones. <laughs> I know, I know, right? I know, I know. Well, the thing is, what it does is it connects to only, well, only fortunately only connects to Motorola phones, but... What it's really for is for you to track your uh, fitness uh, activity as as far as workouts, um, bike rides. You get sensors to put on your bike. You can run with it. It's water resistant, uh, and it tracks you via GPS. Um, it also plays music that you can put onto the device over USB, and it will actually monitor uh, your performance so that if you're really kicking butt to like Eye of the Tiger or <laughs> I don't know what your your favorite that song is definitely song is. on my workout mix. It's a good workout song. Right. Episode. Yeah, it seems to be a popular one. But uh, you know, it basically will listen to you and and figure out what what how well you perform to what songs you're listening to on the device and it'll start to suggest a playlist for you um, to keep you motivated. Uh, it sounds a little gimmicky, but uh, it's an interesting device um, if you really want to track um, your workout and also it ports over to the uh, motoactive.com service uh, web portal and you can uh, you know, analyze your, your workouts there, see how long you've been doing, uh, see if you've, go, you know, increased your speed or your time or decreased your time, hopefully. Um, and they have a whole, like, 40 different uh, activities. So. so basically you said it doesn't provide casual activity tracking. So what does it mm -hmm. not do? Well, it doesn't uh, kind of act. Oh, my gosh. I love it. Um, <laughs> Yes, yeah, so it doesn't actually act like a like an all day activity tracker. In that, say, if you have a Fitbit device or some of the other devices like the, the Nike Fuel Band, um, it, it won't give you uh, a sort of plan for just daily activity and how much you need to move to to really be in shape per day. You know, as far as like a pedometer is concerned, so it can't say, okay, you need to you need to work, you need to move around at least you know ten thousand steps a day. Um, for you to lose 10 pounds, you know, in 30 months, or th in like uh, 30 days, or I don't know, like uh, three months or something, depending um, where the Fitbit will actually let you do that. Um, and other devices, I think, do that too. So that's the one thing. I mean, it could easily do that. It's just a matter of software because it tracks all your 
your uh, steps and, and everything already. So it's a very pricey device that's funky and interesting. Um, but I think there's more needs to be done on the back end just to make it really, really appealing to everybody. Um, but if you really feel like a, one of those triathlon uh, supermen or women, you you should probably check it out because it definitely will give you lots of information about your hardcore workout. And also mad respect to you if you are. So, Lynn, you checked out the ZTE score. Could you give us the rundown of that? Yeah, this is a phone uh, offered by Cricket Wireless. It comes packaged with uh, Move Music. It's a music seri- uh, music subscription tie-in. Um, the phone itself is kind of slow, and I didn't really like the display. Just the responsiveness is kind of insensitive. Insensitive, but not really <laughs> sensitive. And also insensitive. But um, And, um, yeah, it was kind of slow, and, and the... The, you, I mean, you reviewed the uh, Move Music before, and I, we both aren't really fans of the user interface. It's kind of clunky, and I, I didn't really... But I love the concept of Move Music. I think it's a fantastic idea. Yeah, I like the... I mean, of course, if you're a huge fan of music and um, want to have unlimited downloads of um, albums and artists, it's great for, um, for that. But as for a phone um, with like smartphone features with a touch screen and a fast processor. This isn't really my favorite. Yeah, um, Lynn actually gave it two stars. I think it's been a long time since we've <laughs> wow. seen a phone reviewed Damn. that low. So the bottom line is, don't get this. There are other Move Music phones for Cricket if that's what you're interested in. Yeah, there's actually like the ZTE Chorus, which is, it has less features than the score, but the audio playback for music is so much better, which was really um, odd. So. Well, <laughs> fascinating. Uh, we got a reader email that I want to share with you guys. Um, so this was from an anonymous reader who has been nursing an original Verizon Motorola Droid. Nursing oh, yeah, see? Indeed. I knew it. I knew there are people out there like that, man. Um, there you go. Wants a quad-core phone, knows that there are problems getting those to run on 4G. When do we imagine that a quad-core phone will be released in the U.S.? Because remember that the HTC... One X is quad core outside of the U.S. and will be on a fast dual core processor within the U.S. Um, thinks that he or she can get the phone to last through July. So, didn't you see mm. someone recently, Jessica, who had a, a razor, like an old school razor? Yeah, I did actually. <laughs> um, so, Verizon Motorola Droid wins. Yeah, it was so, my so my living. roommate's friend has this like seriously beat up original razor. And it's got chips taken out of the paint. <laughs> I mean, like, you can barely read. Basically, like, the thumbprints have, like, worn away all of the writing on the keypad. And it is, so it looks it is like ancient. A... It is time to change. So I, he, he was basically trying to decide between the iPhone 4S and the Motorola Droid Razor. And what, I, what did you uh, – did you give him any advice? I said, sorry, Brian, you were going to say something. Well, I was just going to say it sounded like the, a battle-scarred, uh, some sort of Star Wars technology, you know, like a, like Han Solo's blaster or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's got all the scuff marks on it. It's, it know. You know, it's like, does he sleep with this thing at night? I feel like it's a prized <laughs> possession, and I was trying to, like, you know, rip it away from his grasp. Um, I think that for him, I think he would enjoy the droid razor not Enjoy. max um, oh you're recommending the droid razor n- yeah i recommended the droid razor max but um he doesn't want to spend 300 dollars oh, on yeah. it and he is not that concerned with the battery life he thinks he'll be able to plug it in and have access um to his charger um frequently and he he actually doesn't i mean he's using a motorola droid razor he doesn't use Google Maps. He's not using all of the smartphone features. So right now he doesn't miss them. But he's a fairly young guy. I think he is going to use it. I mean, he's he's in his late 20s. He's going to use all of these features, and they're going to change his life. Um, he doesn't have any other Apple products, so I don't think it's imperative for him to stay or, or even necessarily beneficial to stay within that environment from an environment standpoint. And I don't think he has especially strong feelings for the iPhone. Um, so I think if he's going to go out and buy a new phone today for him and his use case and his preferences and his aesthetic, I think that he would like the Motorola Droid Razor. 
But on to our anonymous reader, uh, quad core. Do you guys have any predictions when we're going to get a quad core phone in the U.S.? I mean, I'm thinking, my feeling is, uh, I don't know, I mean, obviously you don't know, but I think by June, or at least by, you know, by CTIA, that trade show that'll happen. Uh, May. In mid-May, right? Yeah, um, early. That, early May, yeah. May 7th through 11th. Yeah, yeah that, that is where p- carriers going to drop the news about um, what phone's going to have quad-core. That's where I'm thinking we'll hear uh, you know what's going to happen with quad core? I agree with uh, you personally. So, so I, think I mean, it's... wasn't there that uh, the, I just wrote up a quick post today this morning about the HTC uh, One X, which there's a rumor that it may show up on Sprint, but that's dual core. Um, that would be but, dual core, yeah. Yeah, sadly, but I still but think that's just. But it could be a very know. fast dual core, and we may not even notice it. That's true. I but, mean, you know. I remember later. when dual core was the rage, right? And yeah, was that was like, only oh, a year ago. Dual core, blah. It takes a while from the time they announce things to the time that you get it. But if you can get your phone to last through July, then I think that it, that's that's pretty safe. I think you will probably find what you want. So that is all for this show. But a reminder, if you can't get enough of us and you want to rant or share tips on early termination fees, getting out of contracts early, um, problems with contracts you can't get out of, Anything like that, we are having a special on Wednesday. That's March 21st, 11 a.m. Pacific time, 2 p.m. Eastern time. We're going to be here. Roger Chang's going to be here. Uh, We're going to try to get a special guest, um, but we're still working on that. Either way, we will be talking about why it happens, the agony of when it happens, other tips, we'll be taking live calls. We will be reading your emails. So share your rants, your horror stories, any tips you might have about early termination fees, your cell phone coverage in general. You can email us, dialed in at cnet.com. Leave us a voicemail, 1-866-402-2638. All of our blog posts are at dialedin.cnet.com. All CNET podcasts are at podcast.cnet.com. And feel free to comment on anything you heard in this show and all other shows. So thank you for joining us, and we will see you on Wednesday. Bye. Bye, everyone.